Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are following me because of the Mercari versus Poshmark video, which one is the best for you? Um, thank you guys for sticking around. Um, it's been a while since I've made any kind of reselling videos. I'm going to try to get more into them. Um, I just got caught up with different kinds of videos that I like making and um, just a bunch of things. So I'm still very much on Poshmark and I absolutely love Poshmark. It was the first platform that I was a part of back in March 2017. So I am by no means a Poshmark ex ex expert. I can't even speak, so there's that. Um, I am by no means a Poshmark expert. <laughs> But I kind of have like a little bit of an understanding of how it works now. Um, it's going to take a while before I can truly say that I've mastered it. And I don't even think anybody's really mastered Poshmark. Um, but um, it is a good place. It really is a good place to be. I like the social aspect of it. I didn't really think that I was going to. Um, but it really surprised me that all the changes that they've made, you know, for the better, the whole being able to interact with the customer when they open up a case on you. Uh, just, let's see what else the offer to likers, man, that's, that's a game changer right there. They still do closet clear out though. So, you know, you, if you don't like the offer to likers, you can still do the closet clear out. Um, and what's another one? There's another one. There was like a big one. Oh, you can list on your computer now. That, that should have been the first one. But um, yeah, when I when I started on the app, you know, they, you weren't able to list on the computer. So, but it wasn't too long after I started that they rolled out that feature. So it's not like I'm, you know, I've been there for 15 years. It's like, oh, <laughs> back in whatever, you know. So I can't really say that, you know, I'm like a Poshmark veteran or anything like that. But I really have enjoyed my time on that app. I really have. Um, and I feel like now that I've, I've gotten a little bit more of an understanding on how, you know, what brands sell better on Poshmark, what kind of styles sell better, my sales have increased. Um, you know, I'm not making like $1,000 a week or anything like that, but, you know, it's it's good. It's good play money. It really is. Um, so anyways, so today's video is going to be Poshmark um, kind of, I guess, daily routine that works for me. For me, not for everybody. It's probably not going to work for everybody. It's not like the 30 minute method or whatever other methods there are. Um, it's just something that works for me. So um, the first thing is um, after, you know, waking up and doing all this stuff, um, I'm on Eastern time. So somewhere between the first party and after waking up, I share my closet and I share by category. I don't share by color. I used to, but I'm not on the computer or the laptop in the morning, so it's kind of difficult to do it from my phone. Um, it, so I just share by category on my phone. Um, I'll share the uh, women's tops. I'll share um, shorts, jeans, pants, dresses, skirts, and then, you know, men's stuff I'll share. Shoes are always at the top of my closet uh, whenever possible. I really just because I feel like there's, I don't have too many shoes versus so many tops. And I feel like if people see shoes that, you know, they'll probably be more inclined to be like, Oh, what else can, does she have in her closet that can go along with the shoes? Right. Um, but that's just me. Uh, so that's, that's how I share, um, you know, after waking up and then sometime before the first party and the first party is at noon, um, Eastern time. So, uh, between, between sharing my first, the first time in the morning and the first party, I will list three to eight items. And for me, that's a very reasonable amount uh, to list. I don't go crazy. I'm not trying to do too much um, because this isn't something that I do, you know, for like, to, you know, for an income. I'm not trying to make thousands of dollars off of Poshmark a month. Um, it's something that I, I do because I want to have money for the, you know, for my family so we can go out to eat dinner, you know, every once in a while. We can go, um, you know, bowling to the movies. We have kids. And while my husband does have, you know, a decent job with, you know, a, a, a livable paycheck, we don't necessarily want his paycheck to be the only thing that we use because then it's like you don't really have much left, especially with in this economy, you know, so, but in, in all seriousness, um, you know, it was my choice to remain a stay at home mom. 
um, because when I was working and putting the kids in daycare, I did see that I didn't get much money at the end of, you know, between gas, between, um, you know, because I was constantly stuck in traffic. Just where I live, it there it's inevitable. The drive normally is 20 minutes, but I was always stuck in an hour's worth of traffic on the way home. So that would eat up a lot of gas. Um, I think daycare at the end of the month was $1,600. That's a lot. That is, that's more than, uh, my mortgage. So, you know, that was really depressing. So when it was all said and done, I really didn't have anything left. So I figured stay, be a stay at home mom until all of my kids are of school age. And then that way, you know, I can go back to work if I choose or whatever. Um, but for now, this is fun because I'm doing something that I want to do. I'm not stressed out every single day. I'm not, you know, trying to figure out, you know, if, if, if I'm going over the budget or anything like that. So it, it's really nice to be able to have this. So the three to eight items really helps me. So between, you know, like I said, between the first share and the first party, I share, I list three to eight new items. If I don't have anything to list, or if I feel like um, I'm not really in the mood to list anything, um, I will actually go through stale listings and um, I will pull those, re-photograph them, re-measure them just to make sure, and then relist them. And then to me, that's still fresh in my closet because it, it still, you know, shows that it's new and I don't really care about likes. I honestly do not care if one item has 20 likes, but if it's been sitting there for a couple of months, then, you know, likes really don't mean anything. Um, so I'll just relist it and it'll still show it as fresh and new in my closet. Um, and sometimes the pictures come out better when you redo them, right? So, um, so that's what I do. And then after the first party afternoon and in between the second party, which is at three, yes, which is in between the second party, that's at three. Sometime in between those times, um, I'll get on my phone again and I will go through the brands that I personally follow and I'll look at the listings of all the brands that I personally follow and I'll go through there and I'll click on the pictures that fit my aesthetic, that um, catch my eye, um, and I'll share those items. And then I'll actually go into that person's closet and if I'm not already following them and I like what I see and they have compliant things, um, you know, I will follow their closet and then share a few more items. Um, please have compliant stuff in your <laughs> closet because I really hate going into someone's closet and like everything looks so great in there and then all of a sudden I'll see like all these different perfume bottles and like Ray Dunn mugs and I'm just like, oh, like I really don't want to share your closet because you're completely non-compliant. So, um, yeah, that's like, that's one big thing. Just have a compliant closet. Um, so anyways, <laughs> So I'll do that and I'll do that for a couple of minutes, you know, just like a couple of shares. Um, I'll try to get back. I'll try to share back to people that have already shared my stuff, um, you know, as kind of like a thank you. So I'll do that. And then people who have liked certain items, I'll go into their closets if they have a Poshmark closet and I'll share some of their items um, and follow their closets. And then at three o'clock, if it's not a makeup party, I'll share whatever the theme is. Um, if I don't have anything to share for that particular theme, I don't really worry about it. I just kind of, I just, I'll go into random people's closets and I'll just share stuff. Not the whole time, but sometime throughout that time. And then in between the three o'clock and the seven o'clock party, um, what do I do? What do I do? I really don't do anything in between the three o'clock and seven o'clock party. I really don't do anything Poshmark related. Um, I just kind of like, you know, just go on my own or whatever. If I have listings that I just, I don't want to wait until the next day to list, I'll list those then. Um, I'll do a lot of photographing, measuring, you know, other things or whatever. And then of course I'll be like starting on dinner at that point. So it's, you know, whatever I'll, I'll be in the mom zone, in the wife zone during that time. And then at the seven o'clock party, if I have stuff to share, which it's mostly like plus size and men's and I think kids through those are the, like the three main ones. And I do have stuff to share to those parties. I'll share whatever I have. And then um, I don't normally stick around at seven o'clock. And then in between seven o'clock and 10 o'clock, I'll go in and, um, what will I do? I'll, I'll strategize what I'm going to share for the nighttime party because that's normally a theme like a backyard barbecue or 
something flirty, cute, whatever. I can't remember these things are girl boss parties. I'll try to see exactly what it is that I'm going to share to that party. And then um, I'll probably, most of the time, I'll share something that's not related to that theme. So it'll be like swimsuits or whatever. Or um, I'll share like kids clothes. If it's not, if I didn't already share in a kids theme party, I'll share kids clothes at some time between the seven o'clock and the 10 o'clock party. Um, and then when it comes time to the 10 o'clock party, I'll try to share things from my closet that best fit that theme. So I do one full closet share in the morning and then I list three to eight items. And then between the morning time to the first party, which is at noon for me, Eastern time, um, you know, I will, I will list the three to eight items and I'll do that. And then at the noon party, I'll share whatever's appropriate to that theme. And then between the noon and the three o'clock, I'll go in to the brands that I follow and I will share those items and I will go into those people's closets that I've, you know, shared from and I will follow their closet if I'm not already following them and then share some more of their items. And then <laughs> between the three o'clock and seven o'clock party, <laughs> it's like I have to reiterate all this stuff. Um, between the three o'clock and seven o'clock party, I don't necessarily, you know, do too much sharing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get some stuff in, but mostly I'm, you know, at home enjoying my life with my kids and, you know, my husband. If I do have stuff to list, if there's like a lull in the day and we don't really have anything going on, then I'll just list a few more things. Um, and then at the seven o'clock party, I'll share what's appropriate for that party. And then sometime after the seven o'clock party and between the 10 o'clock party, I'll share things that were not the theme of the seven o'clock party or the three o'clock party. So it'll be like kids clothes or men's clothes or um, swimwear or whatever. And then at night at the 10 o'clock party, I'll share what's appropriate to that particular party theme. So like I'll save a lot of my shoes for the girl, uh, girl boss party. Um, and like the weekend, what is it? The, uh, oh gosh, back to basics party. I'll save like my jeans for then, even though I'll share them in the morning once I'll share them again at the 10 o'clock party. So that's, that's what works for me. That that's, that's it. That's like what really works for me. That's what I found that works for me. Um, you know, and I do get a lot of followers because I am active. I'm not active like a hundred percent of the day. But that's what works for me. That really is. And um, I've seen consistent sales because I do it every single day. Do I make thousands of dollars every single week? No. Do I make like hundreds of dollars a week? Probably. Like, you know, I make like, I make enough, but I'm not, I don't like to share my numbers because I, I don't really like, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things like just because it works one week doesn't mean it's going to work the next week, you know? But this is what I found since March 2017. This is, this is kind of the groove that I found for myself. And it really um, prevents burnout for me. It really does. Um, and this is why it was kind of difficult for me to juggle all three apps. And it, it was just, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I just didn't want to keep cross-posting all day long, cross-listing this, that, and the other. Um, I wanted to put a lot of effort into the app that I really, really liked the most. And definitely Poshmark is the app, it seems, that is the one that works for me the most. So um, I do put a lot of effort into that one. And I think you can be very successful on that app. But it's also it's also fun if you, if you uh, kind of schedule it the right way. If you don't just kind of, if you don't overthink it, you can make it a lot of fun. So that's, that's honestly the Poshmark method that works for me. Um, you know, I'm really curious to hear what your method is. Um, do you have a specific method? I really want to know in the comments, like what works for you? Um, again, this is just what has been working for me for the past year. I might switch it up again. I don't know. Um, you might take cues from this. You might not. You might be like, that is just too much work, lady. You are doing too much or you're not doing enough. And that's fine. But the beauty about this is, is that we all do this different. And um, everybody has their own reasons for doing this. Not everybody wants to make thousands of dollars a month. Not everybody wants to even make hundreds of dollars a month. Some people just really just you know, want to get rid of their stuff. And that's, that's exactly why this, this app works for a lot of people. So, um, yeah, it's pretty demanding. It's a, it's, you know, it's a very needy girlfriend, that's for sure. But 
it's it's really worth it. So um, yeah, I'm really curious to hear what your methods are. Leave your comments down below if you like my channel. If you don't like my channel, I'm sorry. But if you like my channel, subscribe. If you like this video, give it a give it a like. If you don't like it, don't be mean. Just just you know, don't want it. I guess I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, also, I'm wearing my Target shirt. It says pumpkin spice everything. Because, yes, I know it is summertime. And I know there's some people that absolutely love summer. I hate summer. I hate it with fiery passion. And I can't wait for fall. I'm already waiting for Halloween. So I'm wearing, like, black and purple and <laughs> all of this stuff. It's just, like, summer needs to end. Because my allergies can't take anymore either. All right, guys. I've taken up enough of your time. I hope you guys have a wonderful July. And I will talk to you guys next video. Bye.